Good morning, church family. How are you? Actually, it's evening. What's up with that? Good evening. It is Christmas Eve. How weird is that? Um, everybody ready for Christmas? Absolutely. It's already here. It's here. Isn't that amazing? And this year has been so awkward and odd, and it's been such a cool journey that everybody has been on. Amen? It's, uh, we've learned a lot this year. We've, we've seen a lot of the cool things happen in our, in our earth and life happen in our earth. So as we reflect on Christ and when he was born and when, and when uh, Mary was looking down and just tears of joy filling her eyes and Joseph, I'm sure he was crying. I know that when my, all my kids were born, and any dads can relate to this, when your kids are born, I, I feel like I almost touched how much God loves me when my kid was born because that emotion would just, you would die and you'd do anything for this kid. That's how much God loves us, you know. And when he came and he was just a baby, an infant, he loved us so much that he came. He made that choice. He said, Dad, I I'm coming down to save this world, and I agree to do that. So that's what we're celebrating today. And as we start, I'm going to just start with O Holy Night because it's just kind of a classic. So let's do a classic. You can feel free to stand. You can just sit and enjoy. There's not going to be anything in, the, in here, uh, up here, but we're just going to sing it out. Let's just look at your lyrics and we'll do this together. And oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is.
truly taught us to love one another his Bible and his gospel is peace change shall he break for the sorrows are brother and in his name all oppression shall In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel to Nazareth, to a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to a married man, <laughs> to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will not end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. Continuing in Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want exposure to public disgrace, he had in mind 
to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. Back to Luke. In those days, Caesar, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Cornelius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house of David and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, and which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And we're back to Matthew. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born, the King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and they have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star had, they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented them with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country 
by another route. Thank you, Jeff. The Bible tells us that Jesus came to save us from our sins. There's a lot of things that we need to be saved from, aren't there? When you think about it, our health, you know, I mean, that's where a lot of, why a lot of people aren't here tonight because of the virus and all the health things that we need to be saved from. And there are people, I have good friends who are, were dying from the virus. There's hunger and starvation that people need to be saved from. There's violence. Just what a violent world that we live in. There's oppression going on. There's depression going on. We certainly live in a fallen world, don't we? And there's just so many things that we can think of that we need to be saved from. But Jesus came, first of all, the Bible tells us, that we might be saved from our sin. Because really, at the very root of all the things that we need to be saved from, the biggest problem of all is the reality that we are separated from God because of our sin. That there's this brokenness, there's this loneliness, you might say, this, this emptiness because we've been alienated from God because of our sin. I'm reminded of what Augustine said like 1,600 years ago. He said, oh God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they find rest in thee. And so I believe we all have this brokenness within our hearts and we know that we need something. We have this emptiness and it's because of our separation from God and just that longing to be reconnected with him. And that's what I think Christmas reminds us of. There's this in, in, in the quietness, in the holiness of, of the Christmas season, there's this sense of awe and wonder as we're, we see all the images of this child, the Christ child that came to save us, and it captivates us. I think it captivates us because we think maybe, just maybe, it really is all going to be okay. We feel that hope rising up inside of us. And we say, you know, it, it really is. It, it really is going to be okay. I grew up in a family with six children. There were five boys and one girl. Yes, my mom had a, had a rough time. <laughs> and uh, my parents did a good job of celebrating Christmas and cultivating the sense of awe and wonder. I grew up in a small town in the UP, and they'd always have a Christmas tree. They're very simple, but yet the Christmas tree and the lights and we come down early Christmas morning. And I remember one Christmas, I came down and there was a toy. I was probably six years old, but I remember this because it was such a traumatic memory. And there was a toy there that I wanted. And I thought it wasn't for me. And so I started to just cry, and I just cried, and I just threw a, a complete fit in sadness. And I remember my dad saying, no, no, Tim, it, it is for you. And I remember, yes, and, and I just remember the joy of, of saying, yeah, it is for me, and I got to play with this toy. Of course, they don't last for a while, didn't it, because we really need so much more than toys, don't we? You know, the gospel really is not just a maybe, but here at New Hope, we really, really believe that ultimately it really is going to be okay. And it's because of what God did. It's not okay yet, only partially okay, because the world is, is, is still waiting for the king to come. But we really, really do believe that it, it is going to be okay. And it's okay because God did something, because God sent his son into the world. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas, this reality that, that God in the flesh, that Jesus, God incarnate, that he came into the world, and then he lived a righteous life in our place. And he did what we, we can't do as sinful fallen man. And he lived that perfect life. And then after he died on the cross, it didn't end there, but he rose again from the dead. Which essentially said God accepted that sacrifice and it really is all going to be okay. And the gospel is that by faith, that by faith in him, 
we really can be saved. We're reconnected with God. We're saved so that all these other things, too, cannot touch us. Hunger, disease, all the terrible things in the fall. We know that, that really it's going to be okay because of what God did in Jesus in dying on the cross for our sins. I'd like to say a prayer of thanks now, and then I'm going to light these candles. And then I'm going to light the candle of everyone on the end of your row, and then if you might might um, pass that light along to the people down the, the row. And we're, ju- we're just going to remember tonight, and as, as Mark sings uh, Silent Night for us, we're just going to remember what Jesus did for us. But first I want to pray before I light the candles. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you so much today for the gift of Jesus who came to this earth, lived a perfect life on our behalf, then was willing to die on the cross for our sins, to just make everything right. We just thank you that he rose again. He he began this resurrection that someday is going to be ours as well, that we can have this hope and we can celebrate. And it all began on that starry night, that that, that beautiful night when the angels and the shepherds and and the wise men celebrated it when Jesus, when God himself took on flesh in a manger in a baby. We just gather to thank you tonight, and we just pray that your Holy Spirit might just remind us. And I pray that you would give us, and those uh, even that aren't here that are watching this tonight, that you might give us great joy, not in toys, not in the things of this world, but I just pray you would give us a great joy in you, in what you have done for us. We just say thank you tonight. We say this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Jesus came, but he did not go. He is here. He lives here within you. Share that light as you spread this Christmas spirit and it left every single day and spread to everybody throughout this entire year and the years to come. Merry Christmas, everybody.
Drive safe.